Hey there guys and welcome back to Contrast Project Lounge. I'm glad to see you here. Listen, there's been so much going on. We had so much news uh, the whole first of the year. I mean, it's just been crazy. And, and just in the last few months, uh, we had, of course, the, the war in Ukraine. And then we had those uh, celebrity distractions, first in the Academy Awards and then in the courtroom. Uh, and then, and then we started hearing about Elon Musk and, you know, um, and things going on in Florida with DeSantis and Walt Disney World and all that kind of stuff. And, and I can assure you, I'm going to cover all those in an upcoming episodes. Um, uh, I'm going to combine two of them together because I think there's something that we can learn from the two of them together. It's the two celebrity incidences. Um. Uh, but I think right now, uh, one of the things that we really need to do is talk about the elephant in the womb. And I think we all want that, know what that is. The, uh, this thing with the uh, Supreme Court going in, uh, the leaked <laughs> uh, document uh, that uh, was sent to one of the news outlets, and the, it's 98 pages, people, 98 pages, uh, most of which is is really off the wall, and I'm not kidding you. Uh, this guy right here, uh, Samuel Alito, Supreme Court Justice, his draft opinion, so this is not a final. Uh, however, they do have to vote, of course, and but it's a six to three margin majority of conservatives and and, and really uh, they they they're probably going to try to push this through although they really have to it, it it's it's going to be hard for them to push it through within the next couple of months it's really going to be hard i want to i want to just read you something that was cited by judge alito in this draft Two treatises by Sir Matthew Hale described abortion of a quick child who died in the womb as a great crime and a great misprision. Uh, that was Samuel Alito's leaked draft. It was in it. Like I said, it's 98 pages, so it's, it's a long read. And, and it's available online, and I can find some links. And in the description, I'm going to add links for you. Uh, I, I want you to all like, share, comment, let all your friends know, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll be able to get all this stuff, okay? In case you were not familiar with uh, old English, and I mean 17th century English barristers, Sir Matthew Hale also wrote in that same document, uh, a husband cannot be guilty of a rape committed by himself upon his lawful wife. And I'll tell you something, earlier today I got a uh, message from someone who said that that happened to someone in her family even in the 70s and at the time it was still legal then. Wherever she lived, and, and I believe her, I believe her. I, you know, there's some, there's some backwoods places here in the States still today it just blows my mind, blows my mind. During the same time that uh, Sir Matthew Hale was serving, he also uh, sentenced two women to death for witchcraft. Witchcraft. And this is someone that Samuel Alito is quoting in his draft to do away with Roe v. Wade. Unbelievable. Once, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life, to her well-being and dignity. It is a decision she must make for herself. When government controls that decision for her, she's being treated less than a fully adult human responsible for her own choices. Absolutely right. If, if RBG was still alive today, she'd be rolling in her grave. Bless her soul. Now, there has been a, a lot said about body autonomy, okay? And I read in some documents earlier this week 
someone had written, reasonable people can di disagree about when a zygote becomes a human life. That's a philosophical question. However, regardless of whether or not one believes a fetus is ethically equivalent to an adult, it doesn't obligate a mother to sacrifice her body autonomy for another innocent or not. Body autonomy is a critical component of the right to privacy protected by the Constitution. And that's the right to privacy right there is one of the things that is mentioned by Justice Alito in his draft. There, he, he claims that there's problems with the right to privacy in the Constitution and as it pertains to Roe v. Wade, as it pertains to abortion. So, I don't know. <laughs> By all means, profess your belief, um, you know, whether you have these beliefs, you know, right to life or right of choice, you know, uh, whether or not you you know, have these beliefs, by, by all means, you know, profess your belief that providing one's uterus to save the child is morally just and refusing is morally wrong. That is a defensible philosophical position, by the way, um, regardless of who agrees and who disagrees. But legally, it must be the woman's choice to carry out the pregnancy. She may choose to carry the baby to term. She may not. Either decision could be made for all the right reasons, all the wrong reasons, or somewhere in between. Understandable. Uh, there's a lot of things going on there. In, in the graph that you see up here, 28 states are poised to ban abortions. Uh, many are already banned. Many states are already banned. Some with restrictions. Florida is restrictions. Of course, there's the 15-week, you know, restriction. And Thirteen states have what they call a trigger clause in their bill, which means when the Roe v. Wade is reversed or repealed and goes through the, the processes, that uh, 13 states now, uh, it's auto, autopilot. Uh, it automatically bans. I mean, they, they set it up early. It's, it's wild and wacky out there. Now, take a look at this map of the United States, and you'll see the blue states. Those are the ones that are protected by law. Okay, the the only gray state is not protected by law. Okay, the darker states are banned, banned, and of course the red, Florida being a red state. There, you'll see that it's one of the restricted states. There's there's a few restricted states. Ours has the 15-week 15, 15 restriction on it. Now, I've heard people say, and and I've, I've read in the news, you know, uh, Ted Cruz, and I also heard personally with my own ears someone say, well, you know, if they repeal Roe v. Wade and, you, you know, a, a, a young woman lives in a banned state, well, can't she just drive to a state that's legal and get it there and then come back home. Let's take a look at that map again. Look how far away those blue states are from the red states, uh, for the most part. If you live in the south down here, my goodness, you may not have the money. You know, this, this for disadvantaged people, they may not have the resources to, you know, jump in a car, may not even have a car, may be a single mom with no support. Like I say, no support, no resources. Um, you know, thankfully though, recently, some large employers, Amazon included, there's a, there's a list of them, uh, there are some employers that are putting together a process uh, by which uh, young women can take a leave of absence, paid leave, paid leave, and also be reimbursed for travel. So, I mean, that's a good thing. They're, at least some of these companies are stepping up because I know this Roe v. Wade thing is probably going to cause a lot of problems for their employees. A lot of families are going to be hurt by it. I'm telling you, uh, there are reasons. Like I said before, they may be done for all the right reasons, all the wrong reasons, or somewhere in between. So, 
that's all I got on that subject. Uh, we, we're, we'll we talk more. We'll talk more in upcoming episodes because this is going to be in the news for a while. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I, I, I languished over this because I told someone this past week that practically every woman I've ever known has a uh, rape story or an abortion story and or both. So, it, and I, I would venture to say that a lot of you guys out there do have someone in your family that's been raped, abused, had an abortion. And, and, and some women had abortions uh, and never told anybody. And it, shouldn't, it really shouldn't be that way. I mean, but it, again, it's her choice. It's her choice. If she, if she feels like she just wants to keep it to herself, you know, keep it secret, and it's a horrible thing. And it, it, let's say like the, the restriction in Florida, 15 weeks. Is 15 weeks, I mean, she may not even have just found out by a few weeks that she was pregnant. That means she has had to make that very heavy decision in a very short time. It's unfathomable, I mean, what these guys are doing. It, it's just unfathomable. We'll talk more. Um, Coming up, like I said earlier, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about the war in Ukraine. We're going to be talking about the uh, celebrity distractions that we had from the war. And uh, again, I'm going to be both of the celebrity incidences, situations, that thing. I'm going to put those together uh, because I see a similarity there. The toxicity in the relationships and, you know, there could be some, you know, background trauma there too. And it could be lingering trauma. There could be PTSD from here on out. So, I mean, a lot of things to look at it in, in that scenario. Um, going on to, uh, you know, Elon Musk, that's going to be in the news for a while too. You know, there's no way that's going to go through for, for at least a couple of months, even if it does go through. There's there's some stops popping up here and there now because uh, you know there's been a judge in Florida that's uh, trying to trying to put a stop to it because of some money that was uh, invested to him, and they want to stop it. They want to stop it. They invested in Twitter, and Florida invested in some Russian companies, and they're losing money and. Florida's fighting with Disney because Ron DeSantis is pissed off at Disney because they didn't like his don't say gay bill. So, yeah, that's typical of that guy. He likes to retaliate. It's crazy. Childish. And uh, there's a lot of other things going on we're going to talk about. We, we, we have uh, the book bans, the book burnings. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna lighten things up too. We'll we'll still talk to some local artists and you know get some opinions here and there. And to let you know that the uh, production of the uh, talk show with Shelton, my co-host, uh, is going forward. Uh, we've just had some setbacks. That's all. Uh, but we're we're definitely going through and gonna have season three started pretty soon. Pretty soon. So stick with me. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Like, share, and comment on the YouTube channel, like, share, comment, and smash the subscribe button. And you can always find us on our website, thecontrastproject.tv. So, listen, we know that there's some crazy times right now. It's just going wacky out there. So, in the meantime, take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time, peace.